Hi, this is uh, Tom Lucher, and uh, today we are having the paper of the week. And I welcome Brian Holiday from Imperial College. I'm uh, from the Royal Brompton Hospital, as he is, and the Royal College in London, United Kingdom. So, welcome, Brian. Thanks very much. So, we'll discuss a paper uh, this week uh, on artificial intelligence. And this is it. Uh, it has been published in the European Heart Journal as we speak. Uh, the title is Electrocardiogram Screening from a for Aortic Valve Stenosis Using Artificial Intelligence. Very, very in interesting topic. It comes from the Mayo Clinic that's uh, extremely experienced in this field and has published on ECG and atrial fibrillation and left ventricular function. So now a new topic again with the ECG. So Brian, what was the uh, question they uh, addressed? So, so the team set out to, to see if we could pick up aortic stenosis um, from, from patients 12 lead ECGs. So a huge artificial intelligence study um, based on, on, a, on a huge population of patients with aortic stenosis uh, in the Mayo Clinic database. Very ambitious project. I mean, uh, you know, some years ago, I wouldn't have thought that this is feasible, but it was feasible. And uh, so tell us how, what they did. So they took um, uh, uh, over a quarter of a million patients who'd had paired ECGs and echoes at any of the Mayo Clinic sites um, over, a, over a very long period of time. Um, and then they um, trained a, 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 a neural network um, with 50% with of, of these patients, so uh, you know, 125,000 patients. They then validated this neural network with another 10% of these patients. And, and then they tested the network on over 100,000 patients, so 40% of the patients, to see how the network performed. So they, this was an internal validation, sort of, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's important that the artificial intelligence project are validated, ideally even outside the initial cohort, but obviously that was uh, difficult. And so they did an internal validation, which is also acceptable. All right. So the, what did they find? So, so they find that in the validation, um, cohort in the or in sorry in the test cohort, the, the area on the curve for the model that they developed was 0.85, so it had a sensitivity of 78 percent, a specificity of 74 um, percent. They then find that if they added age and sex into this uh, as well as ECG data, that improved the area on the curve a little bit up to 0.87. And, and then if they added in the history of hypertension, so they only picked patients who didn't have a history of hypertension, the, the area of the curve improved even further, so, so 0.90. Um, I, I think it's, it's perhaps important to point out that the negative predictive value of, of the model was, was really, really good. The positive predictive value of the model was, was, was slightly less good, so there was quite a high false positive um, uh, rate so about 25% of all the patients had a false positive test um, and, and maybe that's important whenever we consider which populations of patients and, and how this 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 model might be used in the future. So basically they could really if you examine a patient you hear a murmur you do the CCG it, it tells you it that there is no aortic stenosis you can relax and uh, if not, uh, then, of course, you have to send it up to, for an echo. So this is a tool that you, you could actually provide to, to all general practitioners that uh, have no direct uh, access to an echo where they have to send the patient somewhere else. Is that the concept that uh, is behind it? Yeah, so I, I think given the, the relatively high false positive rate in this population, perhaps it's best picking a population of patients with a high, higher pretest probability, such as those who have an, a, a, a murmur picked up on auscultation. Um, so I think that's exactly the, the, the type of way that this could be used in the future, perhaps. So artificial intelligence doesn't uh, substitute for a, for a good clinician. That's, that's, uh, that's good news. Uh, so how do you how do you think that, that this is actually the cohort that uh, that they looked at? So it's an enormous uh, initial cohort, uh, and uh, and of course they all need to have an ECG and uh, an echo, as as shown on the slide. Huh? 
Sure, sure. So I, I think one of the important things to, to keep in mind is that this wasn't a, a, a selection of patients from a general population. It was a selection of patients who'd been referred up for an echocardiogram. So perhaps the generalizability of, of, of the model to a wider population is, is, is one, one thing that, you know, we need to look at in the future. So basically, particularly the, the, the false positive rate of 25%, of course, can also cost additional, uh, lead to additional uh, healthcare costs. And you're absolutely right. Uh, if you go to the Mayo Clinic for an echo, there is already a suspicion that something uh, may be wrong. And so there is a selection bias. The other uh, important uh, aspect that you mentioned is that uh, hypertension uh, was excluded, although it didn't improve the area under the curve tremendously, just 0.3. Uh, but uh, uh, of course, any clinician knows that uh, patients with uh, arterial hypertension also have left ventricular hypertrophy. They may have very similar uh, electrocardiographic features. So possibly uh, this is the population that has hypertension, but no aortic stenosis that leads to the false positive ones. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think interesting when they looked at what components of the ECGs were most predictive of aortic stenosis, it appeared to be the the segment between the the T wave and the the the, um, the P wave, so the TP segment. Um, and again, why that is it, it, is is. is it is, is, is unclear and perhaps that's one of the components of the study that was slightly unexpected. So why is it, is it important to detect, uh, uh, yeah, that maybe we look at this again uh, before we move to the, to the last points, the probability of aortic stenosis by artificial intelligence ECG. So they divided it up in four categories, uh, mild, moderate and severe by echo, I guess, and uh, what did they find? Yeah, so again, I think this shows that um, if, if you have moderate or severe aortic stenosis, the chances of, 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 um, of that coming up on the, on the um, AICG is high. Um, there's a small amount of false positives in patients with normal and mild AS, but, but again, that is, that is relatively small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So let's move on to the next slide. And that is the uh, incidence of developing moderate or severe aortic stenosis. So how did they assess that? So, so this was actually to see if those patients who were picked up as, as false positives actually were at greater risk of, of having aortic or developing aortic stenosis in the future. So whether this actually could pick up an at-risk subgroup um, who didn't have aortic stenosis yet, but who were going to develop aortic stenosis in the future. Um, and again, I, I think this is a really interesting bit of the study that those patients who had a false positive, so, so didn't have moderate or severe aortic stenosis, um, were, about, uh, were about twice as likely to develop moderate or severe aortic stenosis than those patients who had a, a, a negative ECG. Um, so perhaps even though it wasn't picking up moderate or severe aortic stenosis at the time, it was in the identifying an, an at-risk population who maybe we should be following up a little bit more closely than those who, were, who had a true negative ECG. Well, this is really an amazing uh, result, I find. And, uh, and also it is true, you know, even if you have false positive rates as a hypertensive patients, they also have a higher risk of, uh, of developing atherosclerosis than normotensive patients. So there's an overlap, uh, but that's, uh, that's really, really, really interesting. And this is up to 15 years of follow-up. Uh, and of course that's important in aortic stenosis uh, that develops very slowly over time. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, what can we conclude then from this paper? So right. again, it, I think it shows the, the huge potential that AI has to help us with, with, with diagnosis and, and the huge potential it has to streamline our processes in, in diagnosing and investigating patients. I think it also emphasizes that, as you say, that clinicians aren't redundant yet. And, you know, it's going to be a, a clinician, you know, using this to investigate patients in, in a streamlined way rather than this replacing clinicians. Right, exactly. And of course, if we can predict who develops aortic stenosis, once we would have a medication to prevent aortic stenosis, which 
will come sooner or later as research develops, this would be even more important uh, to select those that would uh, be uh, candidates for such a pharmacological intervention. So I think, and of course, as at the moment, it is certainly a tool that would help GPs and the physicians that have not readily available an echo uh, to select those that really uh, deserve further investigation uh, with a, an imaging tool. So a very interesting paper. Thank you very much for selecting it, Brian. And uh, we look forward to the next uh, paper of the week coming up soon. Thank you very much for listening and see you soon. Bye.